Hi everyone, um, my name is Graham, and I'm here to come clean about something. Uh, um, this is nervous. All right, this is. I'm, I'm so nervous. My I'm, I'm tripping over my own words, but I I just need to get this off my chest. Um, and I guess I want to start by saying I'm sorry. To anybody that I've offended, anybody that I've hurt, I'm sorry. You see, I am a recovering agent of treachery player. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, everybody. I I, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I I just I saw blood for bones and I saw a really high mana cost, and I thought I could cheat it into play and get good value, and I just thought that it would give me an opportunity to play reanimation and actually have a payoff worth going after, because reanimation spells are just so expensive. You're just so expensive. Blood for Bones and Bond of Revival, they were the best we had, and I just needed something worth grabbing, so I just, I thought that this was okay. I thought it was okay. To everyone whose lands I've stolen, I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because I... last year, when this card first came out, it was so hard to get it onto the battlefield that the effect being very powerful, it, it seemed okay. It seemed fine. But now, with... Yorian and Thassa and Luca everywhere and being able to recur it over and over and over again. It's just so vicious. When I play Arena now, almost every time I sit down, I have the thought, oh no, is this what I've been doing to people? <sighs> I'm sorry. To everyone whose lands I've stolen, I am so sorry. You see, Agent of Treachery is it's a 2-3 for 7. That raid is terrible. That body is awful. It's so easy to destroy this thing. But you see, even if it wasn't a human, even if it wasn't a sorcery, even if it wasn't a target, oh my goodness, I had completely forgotten about one Noda too. There are just so many ways to cheat this in now. It's just it's everywhere. It's inescapable. And even if it was just the best 7-drop creature in the format that you could cheat into play quickly, it wouldn't be terrible. It's just the feeling of having all of your crap stolen. It's the worst feeling in the world. And then being able to recur it with Thassa is just so vicious. This is such an unfun card. I thought the point of magic was to have fun. It is a game, right? When did it stop being a game? I thought games were supposed to be fun. Am I wrong? Tell me... Anyway, no, I'm sorry. That's not what we're here to discuss today. I just want to say I'm sorry. I'm on the road to recovery. I am trying to... make it right. And so... I'm not playing Agent of Treachery anymore. I'm not playing Thassa anymore. I'm not touching any of those cards. And fortunately, by virtue of it being online, when I see Yorian in, as my opponent's companion, I can't actually punch them in the mouth. Um, but you better believe I want to. <laughs> I, this card just... It, and here I'm gonna. Uh, I, I have to. I have to break the bit. I'm sorry, guys. I can't even. It's just so Agent of Treachery. I did play this back in the day. I, I have used it quite a bit. And when Blood for Bones was the easiest, quickest way to get recurring value off of this, it was like a one shot. You get to redo it. Cool. Like, and there was a way to abuse it and manipulate it. Absolutely. But the moment Thassa got introduced and Terrace Beyond Death, Agent of Treachery went from like pretty good and annoying to, like, through the stratosphere, amazing. And then with Luca out, now all of a sudden, it is just, the, like, one of the best cards out there. Um, I, I'm trying not to be that reactionary person who's just like, this is terrible, I don't like it, so ban it. But the truth is, 
Agent of Treachery is far and away the least fun card that is currently seeing rotation and see that's out there. And the the other thing about this, and the reason that it feels bad is because you have a certain number of resources and the moment Thassa and Agent come online, they are capable of stealing one of your permanents every single turn. There's a card from back in the day called Confiscate. It was an enchantment that allowed you to steal any permanent on the board. It cost six, and you got to do it once. And then if somebody blew up the enchantment, they got their stuff back. Agent of Treachery doesn't have any of those balances. Any of them. The moment it comes into play, it doesn't matter if somebody can kill it. You don't care. It just, it's, the impact has occurred. Now, you can counter this with Tail's End, because that is a triggered ability. So that is an option. So if you're taking my advice, and you are in, you taking advantage of the best counter spell in Standard right now in Tail's End, this that that helps that works here so if you're running blue definitely put tails in your sideboard if not in your main board um also just it, it's just so vicious the thing about it is once thassa and, and agent are together once those two are online it's going to snowball out of control and you just it's almost impossible to stop it's not impossible to stop there are ways around it but it's very very difficult to stop and when your opponent has that online it's going to take them probably 10 more turns to actually beat you because their whole game plan is set this engine up to prevent my opponent from winning the game. That's it. That's the whole game plan of that deck is to stop your opponent from winning the game. How do you win the game? Well, they rage scoop or you get to a point where you can beat them to death with a 2-3 or if they have any kind of creatures on board that allows them to deal damage to you. Okay, that's something. But, like, the worst part about it is this card just takes freaking forever to win the game while you can't do anything to stop it. It is... This card is cancerous. It's awful. And I don't think it's a horrible design. I'm going to go ahead and say that. Like, I'm not going to say that Wizards screwed up when they made this, because they didn't. This thing has been around for months, if not a full year at this point. And it hasn't been making these kinds of waves. Agent of Treachery is not the problem. It is a very good card. The problem comes into play when you get to circumvent that seven mana cost. Hell, with Luka, that actually makes it easier to cheat into play. Because you can sacrifice damn near anything and you can go grab this. It's Luka's minus two. That's the problem. Yorion and Thassa, those are the problem. And independently... No one of those cards is is a problem either. That's the other thing. Like, Thassa, the Deep Dwelling, without an Agent of Treachery, she's a decent little value engine, but she's not amazing. You know, being able to blink a Frostlings over and over is annoying, and it could be relevant. Like, you could win a game doing stuff like that, but it's not going to dominate the way that Agent does. Um... Yeah, it's 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 vicious. Um, yeah, this card is. I have few good things to say because it, it again it in and of itself. I mean, it's a two three for seven. That rate is so extreme that if you are beholden to the mana cost, all of a sudden, it's it makes sense. If you have to hardcast this, I mean, ramp is incredibly vicious right now, too, so even hardcasting this isn't particularly hard right now. But that aside, I feel like the rate for the effect is fair. Like, the body is negligible. It's very easy to remove. Like, the 2-3 on board is not, an, not a factor at all. And the fact that it's a body means that you could hit this with essence scatter and that kind of thing if you were ever to actually cast it. But you're not casting this. You're blinking it. You are cheating it in. You're There's no reason anymore to actually hard cast this thing. Like, that has to... Actually playing this out of your hand is like playing C. There are Winota decks that don't even have blue in the mana base. There's full-on Boros decks that are running for Asian a Treachery because you can just cheat it in on turn four with Winota. Like, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Being able to consistently cheat in this effect on turn four, get out. That should be impossible. Because if you, if your opponent, if you're doing that and your opponent is 
it doesn't have a particularly strong board presence, you can just grab all the lands. That's the other thing. Agent of Treachery can touch lands. I know everybody is screaming about that. That is an issue. If this said non-land permanent, it would be more fair. It would still be a feel bad. Like, this would still feel bad. But the fact that you can completely strip your mana base, strip your opponent's mana base before they get a chance to set up in a lot of cases now, and then blink this indefinitely so your opponent isn't allowed to keep permanence, that's absurd. Like, that's truly absurd. And the main reason that it's absurd is not that it is an incredibly powerful strategy, because it is not the most powerful strategy. It's a very viable one right now, and it is competitive, but it's not the single most powerful thing you can do. I'm not exactly sure what that is. And the fact that I can't really pin my pin my finger on it means that Wizards is actually doing something. Like, the power creep is, is real, but there isn't a clear, like, number one busted thing because everything is busted now everything is super fast everything is very powerful and so which one is the most powerful which one is the most degenerate i don't know um but i do know that agent of treachery feels the worst to go up against because you're trying i want to play a game and agent of treachery tells me no you you do not get to play this game. You are not allowed to play this game. I play this game. You watch me play this game. That is unacceptable. That experience is truly terrible. And if I have to go up against that one more time, like, I'm not going to quit this game. I love this game. I am completely invested in this game. But all of the newer players who are walking away because they're so sick and tired of seeing this, you're not wrong. And that sucks. I, that is a terrible feeling, and I'm really, really sorry. And if you're one of the a-holes that really loves blinking this thing all day, I don't under like, I'm not gonna yell at you. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna just call you an a-hole and rant on you, because there are plenty of people doing that right now. And I really want to understand how, what do you find fun? Like, wh how do you enjoy that? As someone who used to play Agent of Treachery, I used to run this all the time. I ran reanimation back when it wasn't really viable. And if it w and Agent of Treachery made it almost competitive. But even then, I had to be very selective about which things I took to help hamstring my opponent because I got to do it once. If I was lucky, I would get to do it again the second turn because of a Blood for Bones. If I was lucky. But on a really good game where in that deck I completely and totally dominated, I hit Agent of Treachery maybe three times. Maybe. But nowadays, you get Agent with Thassa, you hit it every single turn. And it takes you a damn hour to actually win a game. What is fun about that? I don't get it. So if you're running that right now, I really would love to understand what is it about that experience that you enjoy? And honestly, I'm I and this isn't a trap. I don't want to yell at you. I don't want to feel like this is me versus you. It's not I really want to understand because I know playing against it is dreadful. And I also know on games when I have played control decks and I've locked my opponent out, it doesn't feel good. The games when, if I'm playing a controlling deck and we have a, a back and forth where they're trying to find the chink in my armor and I'm able to do the judo to get around them and then eke out the win, that feels good because it, we're having a competitive back and forth and we're having an engaging game. And in those games, even when I lose, it feels good because we have this back and forth and this engaging contest of wills that feels fair. And that's what I like. That's what this game ought to be like it should come down to who draws the better card it should be who sees an interesting line of play that the other person didn't who like the other day actually i was going up against one of my one of my viewers on twitch and he faked me out by throwing an ember cleave and i did absolutely everything i could to remove the ember cleave and he managed to pump one of his creatures and hit me with a ram through to win the game I didn't see that coming. It was it was a moment where he was in, hey, hey, look over here, look over here, whack! And it was awesome. I lost that game. I had a blast because he did some cool interaction. And I was playing the game. We had a good contest, a good back and forth, and he happened to find the right, 
angle, the right line to produce an interesting moment. I love that. Agent of Treachery does not do that. It doesn't produce interesting, fun, engaging moments. It's a combo that locks your opponent out from the game. That's it. It's a combo that prevents the person across the table playing the game. Actually, I suspect that there's a there's a bigger issue there too, because when we're playing on Arena, we're going up against an anonymous foe that we got paired up against randomly most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. They're nobody. They are not a human being. They are opponent. They are oppo. They are this other thing. And we know logically that there's a human being pushing the button somewhere in the world. But we don't see their face. We don't hear their voice. We don't know their name. They are not a person to us. They are just a deck that we are trying to beat that behaves in a unique fashion. And that's unfortunate because I remember playing Magic over the kitchen table. And the person across the table from me was my friend. They were a person who I went to class with. They were a person who I made jokes with. They were the person who I had awkward conversations with. Or if they were having trouble, I was somebody they could turn to and vice versa. Like, if you locked your friend out of the game, it didn't feel good. Like a true lockout, most of the time. Unless they like to talk trash. There's a time and a place for that. But, but even then... I was never the player who loved... I don't love that. It doesn't feel good. I don't understand what it is about constr- like constricting on somebody and preventing them from playing the game that feels good. I love a well-placed counterspell. It feels really, really good to allocate your resources appropriately to come out on top. That feels good. And a control deck, in the classic sense, focuses on focuses on doing that with lower value or big value late. You know, like the, the whole idea is preventing your opponent's game plan. That done in certain ways can be interesting and fun. But that done in consistent maintainable ways that prevent your opponent from playing the game in my experience have always felt terrible even if I'm the one doing it. So I don't understand what is enjoyable about that game plan. So if you run Agent, please tell me. And actually, this also speaks to why so many people dislike Teferi. So many people rail against Teferi because he locks down your opponent's game plan. He prevents them from playing the game. Heck, three fairy um, actually straight up prevents your opponents from playing instance or playing any spell at instant speed. That's insane. Like that passive just completely hamstrings a third of the game. It just prevents, like it just straight up, like on the card, it says your opponents cannot play this part of the game. That's ridiculous. What's fun about that? If you, okay, if you are a tournament player and you're trying to win games, I understand playing with the best cards available to try to win prizes. That I understand. So the fact that Teferi you know, showed up a bunch in the world championships, like, all right, I'm not mad at that because these are people who want to win. They're focused on winning. I get that. And that's fine. Like, to some degree, that's fine. And, like, I don't have an issue with the players who are playing that card. I dislike the fact that that card is so powerful and does that. So that is an issue where I do I do take issue with the design of um, of Teferi. And I'm really nervous about Corset 2021 um, because they're going to be introducing more Teferis. Um, and they better dial it. Like, they better dial the power down hard. Because if we see, like, a reprinting of Hero of Dominaria or something like that, you're going to see people, like leaving arena at record levels it's going to be shocking you guys um anyway that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day but it speaks to the point locking out your opponent if you do it if it's an experience that you enjoy if you like to play that way please in the comments below tell me why i really just want to understand because to me it feels 
it feels unpleasant. Like it feels dirty every time I see it happen, whether I'm the person doing it or not. Um, and I, I just want to understand. So please let me know in the comments below. Um, you know, I'm not trying to hate on anybody's style. I just want to understand because I don't get it. And for the people who are quitting the game because it's unpleasant, I do understand that, unfortunately, because I think Magic is a phenomenal game. And so to see the level of frustration around this card particularly, I find disappointing. Um, it's upsetting. And I'm also really, I, I honestly feel guilty for having played it in the past. Um, and that's weird. Like that, that's an odd feeling, especially because I lost a lot of games with those decks. But anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys. Thanks. This has been a little bit of a rant. This can it's been kind of my version of a, of a rant, I suppose. Um, but yeah, the Agent of Treachery. It's it's a card that you can't not see right now. It's absolutely everywhere, um, and I find it it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Um, I'd love to understand if you feel the same way. If you feel differently, please let me know. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Hawks42. You can also find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash hamhawks42. I stream over there almost every day, um, except Sundays. But anyway, and uh, you can see my full schedule over there as well. Thanks so much for hanging out, guys. You're the best. I will catch you next time.